In this video we're going to study shift and rotate operations. Here we have basically two types. Shift right and left. Rotate right and left. And finally, we'll do a simple project. Let's see first instruction. Shift right. We can use the shift right instruction to shift the content of the operand at the input bit by bit, to the right, and query the result at the output. This is its ladder symbol. First we need to choose our data type. Here, the input value is F0 base hexadecimal. We use the end parameter to specify the number of bit positions, which the specified value is to be shifted. This is the binary number which is equivalent to F0. Here, each bits will be shifted 2 bits to right. So, we will lost right bits with this instruction. And on the right side use 0 to fill empty bits. So for this program, the result will be 3C. Let's see another example in the help window. Pay attention, if the selected data type use the last bit, to store number signs such as integer data type, this instruction use the bit sign to fill empty bits on the left side. As you see, we will lost bits which are on the right side. The shift left instruction is like shift right, but it shift bits to left side and use zero to fill empty bits on the right side. Let's see them in TIA. Here are shift and rotate instructions. Let me use a shift right instruction. Here I use a contact to enable this instruction. Here I need to use a positive signal edge detection. Pay attention, in this program the input and output addressed are the same. Let's test this program. Let me modify input value. As you know, each hexadecimal number is equivalent to 4 bits. So, I have used number 4, at the second input. Every time I activate this instruction, CPU shift 4 bits to right side and insert 0 to the left side of MD2 address. If I repeat shifting, the output will be 0 after 8 times. Pay attention, if we don't use the positive signal edge detection, when I activate this instruction for 1 second, it will be executed rapidly about 1000 times. So you will just see 0 at the outputs. Next instructions are rotate right and left. We can use the rotate right instruction to rotate the content of the operand at the input, bit by bit to the right, and query the result at the output. This instruction is like shift right. 
but here, we don't lost right bits. Because they will be used to fill empty bits on the left side. The result of this rotation for two bits, is this binary number which is equal to E6 in hexadecimal format. Now try to rewrite previous program with rotate write instruction. At this program, let me to define and use clock memory, which has been told at previous video. Now, I transfer this program to this virtual PLC. Let me modify input value. As you see, the input value is rotated with 0.5 Hz frequency, or every 2 seconds. Also, we can use watch table to see this rotation in the binary form. Alright, let me insert the used memory, and select binary format. Now, you can see the bits rotation here. Let's do a simple project. We want write a program to use air blow to sort high box in the following plant. I mean, if there is a box with this pattern on the conveyor, we must use air blow to change it. Here, we have two start and stop push buttons. Air blow and a motor which are connected to PLC output. And three sensors. Sensor A detect high box. Sensor B detects all box which are on the conveyor. And finally, an encoder which is connected to conveyor. It sends regular pulse when the conveyor is turning. So if sensor B detects a box on the conveyor, we can use pulses from encoder, and a shift instruction, to have box position. Let me explain my program. Then you may want to improve that. I use a double word memory, MD2, to store boxes position on the conveyor. If a box is passed from sensor B, it's give us a negative pulse, then this or instruction, insert one number on the right side of the memory. At the next network, with each pulse from encoder sensor, this bit shifted to right, which show us the position of the box.
For example, if a box reaches to air blower, this bit will be 1. Alright, I need another double word memory to store high box position, with the same logic. These boxes are detected with sensor A. In the next network, like previous videos, I have used a SR instruction to start stop the motor. Then, I have used encoder pulses to shift two previous memories. In the third network, I have used N logic. Here, if a box is reached to air blower position, and also it is high, then the result of N operation will be equal to this number. With this condition, the air blower will be on for 1 seconds. Alright, this is my program. Pay attention, to test this program, I have used clock memory to generate pulses, instead of using an encoder at PLC input. We know each pulse means a little movement of boxes. Let me test this program with sim table. As you see, with start and stop push buttons, the motor will be on and off. When both sensor A and B give us a negative pulse, it means a high box is placed on the conveyor, which is moving to left. As you see, when a high box reaches to air blower, it will be on for one second. Try to write and test this program to understand its logic, maybe you want improve this program. Thanks for watching.